Hello and welcome to my 10-minute um, review. Uh, basically, this is chapter 22, and we're going to be kind of looking at uh, evolution very, 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 very quickly. Uh, basically, in science, we want to know things, and there's two main types, what we call discovery science and hypothesis-based science. And in order to do hypothesis-based science, we need to basically do a lot of discovery science. It's basically going out and discover things, and we, as we talked in class, we are constantly, scientists are constantly still discovering things. Um, we did talk about the characteristics of life. One of the things that I really think is an important part of life is being able to reproduce. Living things are able to make more of themselves. We also talked a little bit about this organization of life, anything from the very large biosphere, which is all the life here on our planet. We think there may be several biospheres out there, even more, all the way down to the lowliest atoms that, that make up life. And uh, again, you will be aware of those. Basically, what we're talking with Darwinism is basically uh, descent with modification. That is, every time you make a copy of something, um, there's probably going to be a change. It's very difficult to make exact copies. Uh, uh, we showed this in class. I don't have this right here, but I had you guys make up uh, an organism and draw this, and we did it 10 times. And, and basically, there were some significant differences after um, 10 times. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into it right now, but uh, evolution is a theory, but it's kind of like one of those things that it's been around for so long, and there's been so many ways to prove it. And you know what? It just works so well that, you know, it is what it is. Okay, uh, what is evolution? Uh, basically, you need to know that evolution is changing the gene pool of a population over several generations. Uh, we talked a lot about kind of what a gene is, what an allele is, and kind of everything else. And if you need to, please look those up on uh, 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 Wikipedia. And um, uh, this is an example of something right here that is not evolution. And so, uh, again, a worm that during its life cycle develops into a butterfly is not evolution. The fact that the worm can do that is evolution, but that particular worm changing in that way is not evolution. Okay. Um, again, Lamarck is one of these uh, founding fathers to kind of get this idea. And basically, um, he made a suggestion that organisms can change. I don't think he was necessarily right in um, how those organisms change, but we'll look at it. Uh, again, I'm not going to go that much into history, but uh, basically Darwin read a whole bunch of papers of things that had gone on before him, so he kind of had this idea. And then when he went to the Galapagos Islands, um, he got a bunch of data, and then over his lifetime, and see, we see Darwin here is a much older man, uh, beard and everything else like here, um, he came up with this idea, and even then he was loath to publish it. Here's Darwin as a much younger man. Uh, this is showing how he went around. Uh, but again, he was basically scooped by another person. Darwin was nice enough to put it forward. But again, one of the things that Darwin came out with was his book. And uh, if we go back a couple, we could see... Um, actually next. So Darwin came out with his oh, Origin of Species. And so uh, in this book, he published many, many, many examples of which the finches are one of uh, these examples of uh, basically how evolution uh, occurred and examples of, of, of evolution. And so I won't get into that. You could read about it a little bit more. But basically, uh, we have these finches that as their diets, the availability of different foods changed, parts of them change. Basically, in Darwin's observations, what we do is, is, is his big thing was he put up this process that we call natural selection of how it works. No, people had identified, Lamarck had identified that organisms change over time, but Darwin was the first one to kind of really put forward a, a mechanism of how this happens. So that's one of the reasons why we do honor him. And basically had these observations is that um, for the most part, most organisms in po produce populations of offspring that there's many more than you need to make the next generation. Again, a lot of those organisms are going to die. Not all of them are going to survive to produce offspring. In this population, you're also going to have variation. So again, when you look at them, you'll always have population. Again, a single puffball can produce over a million offspring. Um, 
again, these are examples of ladybugs, but if you notice all the different colors, the spots are different, the coloration is different, and things like that. What natural selection does is this process by which uh, it determines which of these organisms are going to produce their offspring. And again, successful individuals will have more offspring than others so that their genes will survive to the next point. I'm not really going to go into how genes are changed. Again, uh, chromosome breaking, duplications, point mutations, gene duplications, uh, duplications, insertions, mutations, point mutations, etc. There's a whole bunch of different ways that the genome can change and it does change. When you make a copy of something, um, whether you're exposed to a mutagen or whether it's just normal mistakes, it happens. But what we're seeing is different phenotypes. So uh, again, your genes are coded for different phenotypes. Natural selection acts as a sieve so that only certain phenotypes, only certain traits will get through. And again, there's a whole host of experience of this. Again, we're going dark beetles to light beetles, etc. Uh, again, a beetle that is light has genes that will make it light. A beetle that is dark has genes that will allow it to be dark. And so if all the light beetles get eaten up, you will be left with kind of dark beetles and the next generation will be significantly darker. Now, this is not all the case, but we will talk about it. Um, not only do we have natural selection, we also have what's called artificial selection, which is basically us human beings determining what populations go back. And again, we see something like the wild mustard seed. Many of our uh, food organisms, like Brussels sprouts, leaves, um, cauliflower, karobi, etc., are all descendants of the original mustard seeds, which is a little scary because, again, if there's a disease that comes through that wipes out the mustard, it could probably wipe all of these things out as well. Um, again, these traits need to be inherited. Uh, again, human beings going through and manufacturing a bonsai tree to have this kind of perfect aesthetic shape is not going to be inherited by the next generation. Okay. Um, again, part of what Lamarck was wrong with is that those uh, a giraffe uh, could kind of stretch or work out or change its shape a little bit so that it would be better um, uh, exploit its environment and that would go on to the next generation. Again, you know, it's amazing what he did not knowing what he does and what you know now. Uh, again, we had a class discussion talking about this guy, Lizard Man. Uh, are, is Lizard Man and Lizard Wife going to have a bunch of little lizard babies? No, they are not because all this stuff here is tattoos. All this stuff is artificial. Again, we don't see it here even though he has pointed teeth and he has this bifurcated tongue. That is due to surgery and other manipulations and that is not going to affect what his offspring are going to be out. One of the things that you really need to be able to do in this class is to be able to explain um, what's happening with uh, evolution. And we have a number of different um, things that we um, uh, look at that prove to us that evolution is going on. We have direct observation of selection, the fossil record, anatomical homology, comparative embryology, molecular homology, and this process that we call convergent evolution. Again, we see natural selection in action all the time, and we have to worry about it. Again, and to, um, microorganisms that become resistant to our antibiotics is an example of natural selection. Uh, malaria uh, uh, transferring mosquitoes that become resistant to DDT is an example of that. Again, we've seen sedimentary rock and fossil uh, deposition, and I'll have a picture here. So this is my son and I. We were able to go to Wyoming and find um, dinosaur fossils. That's a footprint of a dinosaur next, next to my son. We're glad that we're a couple million years apart because this thing would have been very, very, very mean. Um, again, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, again, we can look at older fossil, newer fossils, and we can see evolutionary change in those fossils. I, for the most part, am not that happy with those particular ones because who's to say that this particular part of this organism is that important so that we can really um, highlight that. And so there's other things. Uh, transition fossils are these fossils that we see that we go from one form to another. And, and again, going from uh, um, land-based animals to whales, we would see actually animals that probably had smaller feet 
are probably starting to lose their feet, and we're look for those transitional animals. And it's hard to find those because number one, not all organisms produce fossils, and number two, it's hard to find some of these fossils. But you know, when we really thought about these and we looked for them, we've been able to find them. Or when people go out there, I haven't been able to find them, but people go out there and they do find them. Again, when we look at comparative anatomy, homology is where is the similarity due to a common ancestry. So organisms that share an ancestor are going to share limbs. And so again, here in these vertebrates, everything from humans to cats to whale to bat all have the same bone structure. Why? Because it depends on that same material. Uh, I'm not going to go into vestigial structures as well. Uh, comparative embryology, again, we will look at this a little bit later on in our in our class, but here's an embryo of a human being, here's an embryo of a chicken. They look very similar for a very long time. And again, to set up the basic body plan of a head, uh, the two forelimbs, two hind limbs, a tail, etc., that's all done in the same matter, and then it is modified a little bit later. Again, when we look at genetic hypotheses, um, a chimpanzee chimpanzees and human beings are very closely related due to their physical structures. Our 10 minutes is up. But it's also, if we look at our genetics, it's very similar as well. And so all of these primates here all have very similar genetics. One of the reasons why we really want to look at chimpanzees compared to human beings is that this 2% difference that we see in them is responsible for, again, not only our hairlessness compared to their hairiness, but also um, basically everything that we have, our culture. Our, our inventiveness, language, etc., are all things that we can find out where they're at by studying these. Again, we will look at evolutionary trees a little bit later on. Um, uh, in convergent evolution, which is one of those possibilities where we have two organisms that are going to look like one another. So a lot of times looking at what an organism looks like isn't really going to tell us their relationship because two organisms that perform the same activities or inhabit the same niche, that is what they do, are going to look similar to one another. So I'm just giving you a warning on that. Okay. All right. So thank you for coming and uh, seeing all of this. Uh, basically, what we're looking at is natural selection. We see variation that living things um, vary within a population. Inheritance, genetic traits are inherited and passed on from parents to the offspring. In selection, individuals with favorable traits live longer, reproduce more. In time, evolution basically takes time. Um, as we go through this, we will give you exceptions to, to all of these, but basically it is um, true. So thanks for uh, coming and listening to this talk, and I will 